first like to say that we are in full support of GEO and their efforts. President Coleman, Board of Regents, and Executive Officers of the University of Michigan, thank you for allowing me to speak with you today. My name is Luz Mesa and I am a junior in the School of LSNA. I stand here today representing the Coalition for Tuition Equality and in solidarity with the activists of e-racism, who, who you will hear from after me. I would like to begin by thanking Regents Darlow and Wright for reaching out to the Coalition. We really appreciate your efforts to learn about the issue we have brought before you. My friend Daniel Morales brought you his story last month and asked you to give deserving students like him a fair shot. Today I bring you my story and the story of my community. I don't see the diversity of my high school, which is 43.9% African American and 39.1% Latino represented at the university. Along with the coalition and e-racism, I ask you to stand up for the values of our university and help us bring true, di true diversity to our campus by increasing the percentage of African American and Latino students enrolled, implementing the requirement of an intergroup relations class for incoming freshmen, and offering undocumented students in state tuition. We need your help in making our university a reflection, a reflection of the state of Michigan's true leaders and best, a, re a reflection of who we are and what we stand for. I was born in rural Mexico, but moved to California when I was two years old. My family and I moved back to Mexico when I was 10 before finally settling down in the south of Detroit when I was 13. It was not until I returned from Mexico that, I, that year that I understood why my fa father had decided to, decided to bring us to the United States in the first place. Over the course of three years I spent in Mexico, neither my classmates nor I ever spoke about going to college or the value of education. In fact, most of my classmates barely made it through elementary school. During my first year back in the United States, my eighth grade teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. Most kids had the response to curse, a doctor, a lawyer, or a teacher. I did not have an answer. Not once had I ever been encouraged to think about college during the three years I spent in Mexico. Our parents moved us to the United States because they understand the opportunities we will have. There were only five of my peers from elementary school to graduate from high school. I was the only to make it to college. This is because I had a major advantage over all the other students who made it to high school. I was able to adjust my immigration status through my father, a U.S. citizen who had adjusted his status in 1986. I was able to attend college because there were federal and state financial grants for me, and because I was allowed to pay in state tuition here. The University of Michigan has always been my dream school, from the mo mo moment I moved to Michigan to when I sat down and worked on college applications. To get here, I worked hard in high school, graduating the top 5% of my class with the highest ACT score. There were many other bright students in Southwestern High School but many of them were weighed down by their immigration status. As undocumented immigrants, they knew it would be nearly impossible to make it to college, and they felt hopeless. For many, it was not even worth trying. One day during junior year, a friend of mine teased me about using our lunch hour to do classwork. I didn't back down and reminded him that I needed straight A's if I wanted to attend the University of Michigan. Pulling up a chair, I encouraged him to join me. He stared at the chair and back at me. His response would be stuck in my head forever. He said, what's the point if I can't do anything after high school? My eyes fell to the floor. I felt guilty and privileged. I never made a similar comment again. I knew I could not possibly understand how they were feeling. When, if, when I go back to Detroit during breaks, I usually see this, see this friend. He always asks how school is going, and I can't, bring to look my, I can't bring myself to look him in the eye. I simply say, it's okay, even though we both know I'm lying. We both know that attending the University of Michigan has been the best experience of my life. My best friend Rodrigo worked hard alongside with me to make it to college, despite being undocumented. He, re he refused to give up his dream of becoming a computer engineer. Academically, we were in constant competition. I cheered him on as he applied to private schools that would accept him regardless of his immigration status, and he did the same for me. He was sitting right next to me the moment I found out I had been accepted to Michigan. The celebrations began. First stop, our favorite restaurant, La Terraza, where we feasted on Camarón de Saladiata. He eventually got into the University of Detroit Mercy on a full tuition scholarship. Together, we had made it. But the day before I moved to Ann Arbor, Rodrigo made a wrong turn into the Ambassador Bridge. This innocent mistake got him detained by Homeland Security. I frantically went to help him, but despite my efforts to try and reason with federal agents, I returned to his parents with only his car. Rodrigo was deported to Mexico soon after, losing the opportunity his family had moved here for in the first place. After Rodrigo's deportation, I knew I could not allow this to happen to other students. I became an activist for the Dream Act my freshman year last November. I found, I found Kevin Russell Berg, and we have worked together to form the Coalition for Tuition Equality. I am here to ask you to support the campaign for tuition equality at the University of Michigan and erase some schools to make the university more accepting to underrepresented minority students so that I can go back to Southwest Detroit, look my peers in the eye, and tell them that the University of Michigan cares about them and that we are doing something to remedy the situation. 
The lives and futures of nearly 21,000 undocumented students in the state of Michigan are in your hands. I come here with a diverse team from standing with me to ask you to step forward and work with us to change our excluding tuition policies.
The common reply was not, I don't have any experiences with racism on campus, but rather, I don't know which one to choose. The racism that students on our campus have had to endure has become far too normalized and swept under the rug. We are here today to tell you that in 2012, racism is much too prevalent on campus and we need to work together to end this. We have agreed upon two objectives that we see as steps to begin fighting racism on campus. Number one, in 1970, the Black Action Movement demanded that black enrollment at this university be increased to 10%. We have yet to accomplish that. We again demand that black enrollment be increased from 4.7% to 10% by 2016. Number two, we demand that intergroup relation classes be a requirement for all incoming freshmen by year 2014 to improve race relations and culture sensitivity so that the previously mentioned testimonies are avoided in the future. Lastly, we further support the Coalition for Tuition Equality's goal of changing the University of Michigan's policy so that undocumented students living in Michigan can pay in-state tuition. The Coalition, E-Racism, the students here to today, yourself, President Coleman, the Executive Board, and the Regents, we all have a common goal, a commitment to diversity and equal educational opportunities. It's time to live up to this commitment. Thank you. We'll be outside.